Captain said he ate great this morning. He had um, the ground beef with all of the vitamins mixed in, the carnivore diet. And what else? He ate carnivore diet and, and chicken necks. And chicken necks. And yes, he ate everything. Did he crunch the chicken necks? He did. I could hear him before so I, I even, good working teeth before I even checked on him. Yeah, Jimmy was saying how pretty his teeth were yesterday. Oh, these <laughs> chocolate brown. That is pretty. Good morning from Paris, Noir. Bobcat is going in the cage that used to be the home to Chitaro Leopard originally. And then there's been a number of leopards who've lived in there. Actually, I think Chitaro was probably not the first. Maybe he was the first. I don't remember. The cage has been changed over the years. It's got a beautiful big tree in it. Great big 8 foot by 12 foot den under a hill of dirt so that it's nice and cool for him. He's got bobcat neighbors, Bailey and Moses. I understand the reason that the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary was willing to send him to us. We tried to get them to send him when we picked up Clover and Lucky. They weren't ready to give him up yet, but apparently he did not like his neighbors recently. And so they were like, all right, we're ready. So I don't know if he's gonna like Moses and Bailey so much, but they're so far away that he'll be able to see them, but they won't be intimidating him or vice versa. So that should be fine. Just waiting for them to come through the gate here. I'll watch the gate shut if you want to go on over. Ashton's making faces because he pooed. A lot of times when cats are worried, they will let go of everything they're holding in case they have to run. And so he's not sure what's going on. He just got put into the squeeze cage this morning. And I am so thankful that he did not do that on the four hour trip back from Jupiter, Florida yesterday. That would have been an awful drive. Maybe we can get a little report on how Echo, the baby bobcat, is doing. The reason I went over there was they had called me about another bobcat kitten ending up being orphaned in a fire. And the firefighters had done a prescribed burn and then had put the thing out. And as they were packing up and leaving, they found a cold, wet, shivering baby bobcat about three weeks old. So they brought it to the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary. And because we had taken Clover and Lucky and we're very happy to take them for a rehab and release, we asked if we'd like to come over and pick up that baby. So we did, and we named it Echo to go with Bravo and Tango because they're about the same size. Hopefully we'll be able to introduce them when Bravo and Tango get just a little bit bigger. Frankie seems to be a pretty mellow bobcat. I think he's going to do this without a whole lot of scaredyness. Ooh, I love that ocelot bag. Very nice. I'm 
so glad he didn't do that on the four hour trip home yesterday. <laughs> Oh, new toys, new toys are the best toys. Yeah, Nicole made a nice mess shortly after she arrived here too, so they both saved it. Oh. <laughs> did she eat okay, do you know? So, she did last night, she ate everything right away before I left, mm -hmm. and then I fed her this morning and went to grab some more bowls since we've got more cats in there and came back and almost all of it was gone so yeah has she been fed yet this morning or do you know? yeah i fed her that's what i fed her this morning she oh. ate everything but a little bit of her mouth man i can smell that crate from here Whew. So, <laughs> holy about, cats he does have claws so if he comes to you Do we want to test that? What? That fecal that he just left us? Yeah. He'll be happy to get out of there. Since that smell. Chop it just a little bit. Welcome home, Frankie. He's got a Coolaroo. Yeah, you could throw up in that tree if you want. Go for it, Frankie. You'll love it up there. He's obviously freaked out. I'm going to leave the area, but we'll come back later and see if he can calm down with me. Nice job.